So it's, it's super early in the morning, but I got a comment about organizing and backing up files, and literally I just answered it, and I feel like it's a very important thing that, um, I don't want to say people take for granted, but it's something that's super important. It doesn't matter what industry you're in, and I figured I'd just kind of come outside since we're having beautiful weather right now and talk about it while I go about my morning chores, which may be a little loud, but I promise, if not anything else, it's going to be entertaining. So this might be a little trickier than I thought, because parrots are notoriously curious, and I need to make sure that we don't have friends coming and eating the phone. Okay, so maybe my plan of going outside and hanging out with the parrots while I pontificated on backup plans and saving all of your data wasn't the best idea. The bottom line is parrots are really, really smart and very, very curious, and I don't normally walk around holding my phone inside the aviary. They were like, what's that? Can we take a look? So what I'm going to do instead is I'm still going to talk about backups and file versioning and all that exciting, exciting kinds of things today, but I'm just going to show kind of what I did when I was feeding the parrots kind of as a B-roll sort of a thing. So you don't have to sit here and stare at my face the whole time. So backups, I can't stress enough how important backing up files is if you don't back up your files and your hard drive crashes let me rephrase that if you don't back up your files when your hard drive crashes you're completely out of luck if files don't exist in three separate places they don't exist at all that's my mentality behind backups but i want to talk about versioning and saving files just on a single drive and then how you back those files up. So it's sort of about project file organization and then project file backup. Before I get too far, I'm going to go over here to VE Pro because I know there is a lot of confusion around how and what you should back up when it comes to using VE Pro. This is my first computer slave. And this is how it sits if I don't have an instance, uh, if I don't have Cubase open at all. So it's just sitting here with my Strings01 and Strings02. Now you see that I've got a year on here so that I know I'm current, and I have a version two. I may end up getting to a version three, hard to say. Um, it just depends on if new libraries get added. But that's the first thing. Versioning is gonna save you a lot of time. If I just kept saving this as a new file with the same name over and over and over again, I wouldn't have any way of either going backwards if there was something in the previous version I wanted to get, or, heaven forbid, I made a mistake and accidentally deleted something, which unfortunately happens more often than I would care, I wouldn't have a copy of it because I've only got strings 01. There's not a version 1 or a version 2 or a 2018 for that matter. Now, when I'm backing up with VE Pro, there's kind of what, one, two, three levels that I think of. The first one is the contact multi itself. And in this case, looks like I don't even know what I've selected. All right, so now we're in violent one for Spitfire. <clears throat> I'm going to save this as a multi. And I'm going to name it probably this, Spitfire Violins 1. That way, if I have any issues or file problems or I accidentally delete something over here or anything like that, I can make this dialog box go away. I can 
pull this back up and reload it in a fresh version of contact. So every single one of these banks of contact instruments you see, I have backed up in a folder, probably called contact multis, and they're labeled accordingly. And they might even, um, a lot of times, I will put them in that particular date for either the year and the month, or if it's something that I do a lot of different versions of, I'll even have the day in there. So that's the first kind of line of defense for backing up, making sure that you've got your multis backed up. Number two is your instance. And this is where I blame Vienna Ensemble Pro completely for making me say instance a thousand different times but they have kind of different names. Um, this tab is basically referred to as an instance here, but then it says save project as. So it is a little misleading, but essentially I have two instances open and both of these are also saved. And when you save an instance under this menu, it's just saving this tab. And that's what you see right here. This is the instance and it's actually called a project. So do with that what you will. It should say project here, but hey, I'm not the one that wrote the software. I, I love it, so I can't complain too much. So I have these backed up, and that's sort of the versioning idea I was talking about earlier. Then under file, you have your server project. And what the server project is, is all the tabs that you have over here. Maybe you've got 15 or 20 of them because you like things broken up differently. This will save all the tabs together. And if you make a change here on your contact instrument and you go and save your server project, it's going to save that change within contact. The server saves all of this and all of this. The instance or the standard project saves your tab with all of this and all of this. So it's a matter of scope. This is a very shallow net. This gets a little wider. And then when you go to your server project, that's everything. Now, why, why can you not just save your server project? You can, but then you're talking about so many different versions of server project files. And you'd have to have, at least if you're me and you're super geeky and detailed about it, I would have to have everything identified somehow in the naming structure. So it'd be, you know, 2018, uh, JGM, slave one, master, pro it's, it gets too granular in the naming system. So I have the master server project, and you know this because it says V-E-S-P. So Vienna Ensemble server project, Vienna Ensemble project, and it even pops up server project in the little tag. So I think it's really important to back everything up that way. Now I've got my three main files here on the desktop and another, another free quick tip in this video is if you ever have any issues with Vienna Ensemble, if stuff starts getting really glitchy and you do the usual like tweaking your buffer settings and nothing seems to work, first of all, just restart everything. That's gonna fix 99% of your problems. If you're still having an issue, reinstall the VE Pro software along with your e-license control center. I actually have, here's the most recent VE Pro software. This guy actually goes in here so I can keep track of all of it. And the idea is they are here purely for reinstallation purposes. And I'll, I think you used to have to deinstall VE Pro and then install it. I think now with the new ones, it deinstalls it automatically and you won't have issues. So you just launch this, you reinstall everything, you launch your e-license control setup. The most recent one, this file is actually updated a lot more than the VE Pro stuff is, probably every two or three weeks. That doesn't mean you have to update it every two or three weeks. It's fine if you want to, but if you have issues, e-license control setup, VE Ensemble Pro, <laughs> Vienna Ensemble Pro, just reinstall them, restart the computer again, and more than likely your problems are solved. So that's the general local versioning and backup that I do on all of my slave computers for Vienna Ensemble Pro. Now the trick is what you see here, these two tabs only exist locally on my slave machine and they are backed up right here. I also have copies of them 
in this folder. So if I mess something up and I accidentally save strings 02 over strings 01 right here, I still have a, an extra version of it in here and I can work my way backwards. Any other instances of VE Pro that I want to have open, and now that I've reminded myself, this is called a project. So if I want to, well, see right there, it says new instance. I blame you, Vienna. So if I have local instances that are hosted in Cubase, that's going to open here automatically and close. And I've talked about this in the VE Pro episode series that I did earlier. So you can go back and check that out if you want more detailed information. And for a quick one, there's a quick tip about VE Pro and how the differences are between having something with the lock engaged and having something with the lock not engaged. So everything that is project based that is going to change between project to project is automatically saving when I hit save in Cubase because it's instantiated as a plugin in Cubase. It's a V V. <laughs> it's like I want to say Vienna Ensemble Pro and I want to see VE Pro, so I end up doing a mishmash of them. It's a VE Pro plugin and it's remembering everything locally in Cubase. You open the file and Cubase sees the VE Pro plugin, sends information out to my server and loads that particular instance. When I close Cubase out, it disappears. So I don't have to back up any Vienna Ensemble Pro files locally in Cubase the way I'm doing it on my slaves because it's saved within the Cubase file. Now that being said, I back things up on my main computer um, a little differently than I would if I were doing Vienna Ensemble Pro on the slaves. And unfortunately, just for NDA purposes, I can't really open up my Explorer window and show you all my files because an NDA means non-disclosure agreement. So there's always um, sensitive project names and things like that. And if I blurred them all out, it would completely defeat the purpose of showing you. Um, but here's my standard strategy for backing up. I have one drive that's a solid state. All my drives are solid state, but I have one drive that's a small solid state drive, like 128 gigs, and I call that current. And whatever I'm working on, whatever a current, you guessed it, project is, I'm working on it on that drive. Basically, any open projects that have not been finished and are in a state of development are on the current drive. Now, this does one of two things. It keeps that drive isolated and makes speed and everything else optimized because there's not a lot of projects sitting on there. And if I'm recording audio, let's say, it's only going to the current drive. It's not going to all the other different drives that I have. There's like a music drive that has all of my music library, you know, listening soundtracks and things too. I've got a, an OS drive that only has the Windows operating system on it and nothing else. I have a projects drive, which is actually a rated cluster of four drives. So that's a, I believe, a four terabyte rated set of drives. That's where everything that basically has not been completed, but is still being worked on sits. Now, what's the difference between projects and current? Let's say I'm working on a game and it's gonna have 60 cues in it and I've got a folder that's called reference, which is where I put all the stuff from the developer in, the movies and the artwork and everything. There's, you know, different ideas. There's things that I did when I was just demoing ideas. I've got a whole bunch of different things that are not specifically related to the queue I am working on today for that developer. The queue I'm working on today is on the current drive in a folder with the same name as the project drive. On the project drive is everything else that I've already done for the developer. So all my existing queues that have been finished and like I said, the reference folder, anything else is on the project drive. And that's why it's so big because I can get upwards of 100 gigabytes just of reference material really quickly when you're getting QuickTime videos and art and all kinds of gameplay and things like that, it builds up fast. And this system allows me to have things I'm working on today on a smaller, and I won't say faster because the drives are the same speed, but it's a smaller drive and I will copy anything from the current drive down to the project's drive at the end of the day. So that's sort of my first stage of backups. And usually I'll keep within a milestone, let's say, which is just a, a great word for deadlines within 
games. So a milestone might be 10 cues. I'll probably keep all 10 cues in that current drive so I can reference them. I might want to use one of the previous files as a template. It's going to sit on the current drive and then when the milestone's complete and everything's been approved and delivered, I'll move it down to the projects drive. So the literal second tier of backups that I have is every drive on every computer in the studio is backed up on a semi-weekly basis to a separate serial ATA drive. And I have this great little gizmo from Otherworld Computing that just allows you to take a SATA drive and plug it in and it'll show up either as FireWire or USB depending on your computer connections and you can treat it as an external drive. I've got a whole collection of SATA drives that are physical backups of the, I mean, exact clones of the drives that exist on every single one of my machines. Now I do have drives that are rated so I had to buy bigger SATA drives. And the one thing that I don't have duplicate duplicates of in this case of secondary backups are my samples. I have a single sample drive that I also back up to another sample drive. It's a four terabyte drive and that has all of the samples that I've basically downloaded. And that's between my main computer and all of the different slave computers. And I've been doing this long enough that I also have the DVD and even, wow, CD backups of some of the older samples. So that's the idea of kind of the other version of backups that physically exist in the studio, but are duplicates of all the drives I have in the computers. I always make sure that what's in the projects drive is backed up to my master backup drive. And this is a, another rated set in a single rack space. And I think I got it from Otherworld Computing and I'll Put a link in the description. It's two pairs of four terabytes SATA, SATA drives. Four pairs of two terabyte SATA drives. Say that 10 times fast. And the idea is this is redundant. So I've got essentially an eight terabyte drive and it's slower, but I'm only using it for backup. I, I'm not streaming samples off of it or recording to it or anything like that. So I just see it as a master backup drive and I'll have game xyz as a folder which is the same folder that's on my project drive and at the end of every week i run a backup that's actually built into directory opus which is this very great windows only um, kind of browser file management everything system that i've been using ever since i switched to pc i use pathfinder when i was on a mac and i don't think it had backup maybe it did um, i was using carbon copy cloner on the mac um, in addition to Pathfinder for navigation. But with Directory Opus, it has the backup built in. So I will just tell it, look at the game XYZ folder on my projects drive. Now look at the game XYZ folder on my master backup drive, compare them and copy anything from projects that doesn't exist to master backup. And the importance of this is the computer is making the comparison and deciding what to back up and not me because I will forget something. I don't have it erase anything on the backup drive. It's just adding more stuff. It's like a one-way backup. Now with this rated eight terabytes, technically there are 16 terabytes in there. There's two drives together that make eight terabytes and then those are being duplicated in the second pair of drives. So as I'm backing up, I'm actually backing up twice. So it's existing on my projects drive and it's existing in two different places on my rated master backup. Now I don't really consider that kind of backing up the backup. That's more, if a SATA drive goes out, I'm not gonna lose my backups. I've got a secondary backup there. And I've replaced those drives about every two years. I think I've got three sets now um, and they're all in, in cases in storage and I can go back to them if I want to. So that's kind of where everything lives. Back to 2019, <laughs> like 1996, I think. So it's a good 20 years of backups and everything is on the master backup which is duplicated. Now that master backup is also duplicated online in a cloud server, at least it used to be. I was using CrashPlan and it was great, a little slow because you have to upload all this data, but it worked really, really well and then they've, they've changed things around. So currently I actually don't have an online backup 
And if anyone has something that they suggest that they really like, that's not the standard, you know, you can use Google Drive or you can use this or you can use that, please, I'm, I'm all ears and looking for something. The problem is I have terabytes and terabytes of data that I'd like to back up. And maybe when you're dealing with data of that size, backing up in the cloud isn't the best solution. So my third tier of kind of having things backed up is actually an off-site copy. And that's something that I would love to say I do it every week, but probably every few months I have another set of those same drives from my master backup that I will bring in and clone. And it's not here at the studio. And that's really more just of a super geeky way of keeping things backed up. But I like the idea, heaven forbid, if something happens around here, I'm not going to lose all of my music. Because really, I used to do it on CDs, and then I did it on DVDs, and before CDs it was zip disks and everything else. I've got all the CDs in the closet, and that's great, but basically everything's digital now. So I really need to make sure that I've got that three-stage backup system. I hope this was helpful and not too boring. You can only be too excited talking about backing up, but thank you to all the parrots for making it at least a little more entertaining, and I'll see you soon.